I am Filippo Voltaggio once again, and I am having the pleasure of a wonderful conversation with Dr. William Tiller, Professor Emeritus at Stanford University, and again, and so much more. And, and earlier you were telling us how much more we really are, and it's the or most... Will, or will become, or as we manifest become. it. It's up to us, our choice. And, and during the break, you said something interesting to me. You are the more of who you are because you've had assistance from an unseen universe. Could you talk a little bit about that for our audience? Uh, my working hypothesis is that the, un the universe we don't see with our tools, okay, is full of intelligence, some much higher than others. Uh, Consciousness continues mm. beyond distance time, beyond this particular classroom. I think of this as a simulator for us to grow in our capacity to be creators. And we create this relative universe all the time mm. by our thoughts, attitudes, and actions. And we get what we earn and we create. It's up to us, uh, really. And uh, we can dig deeper and become more inner self-managed, or we can allow the noise of our present world to totally encompass us mm. and totally bind us into a non-reflective life. It's up to us. So the reflection is important yes, for our life? For our life. Personally. To see where we are and see who we are and so see why we are. Mm. Yeah. Taking time for reflection is very important. I remember during our radio interview that you ended with the single most important thing that we could do is to yeah. meditate. Yes, to learn to meditate, to mm. be able to go within because the dictum, prime dictum is, to thine own self be true. To thine own self be true. Yeah. Mm. And you have to understand what that self is. And you can understand it by going within and then by reflecting on the within and the without and one's own life and relationship to other aspects of life. What fascinates me about this conversation is, is you're a scientist, a very respected scientist, a doctor of studies yeah. in science. Why not? You're not a preacher. You're not a... No. You, but we're all, this is all, we're part of all of this. Mm. You know, I mean, religion is an attempt to describe the source without any tools to measure. Mm. And one can very easily get tied into marketing and dogma. <laughs> okay. So, so it's... it's um, it is what it is, but it is what we've made it. Mm. Uh, but the opportunity is there to do a lot better. Well, talking about instruments to measure, you've done many studies, of course, written, what, three, five hundred papers and, yeah. and many books. And, yes. Uh, one of the studies that you've done that fascinates me is a study of a room mm -hmm. where you actually measure the entropy and the gamma rays, I believe, and... No, that was someone else. That, that, was, that was Gary Schwartz, the gamma rays. But we measure a room. Okay. We, we have developed a, uh, at this point, two categories of device. Um, <coughs> let me go back one step. In terms of our normal reality, okay, uh, happens to be called U1 electromagnetic gauge symmetry state reality. Okay. Um, from that level of reality, um, it isn't really po possible to intend to make things happen. It, you, don't, you don't get much if, if the room stays at that state. But if you can lift that room state to a higher, the next higher gauge symmetry state, it's called SU2, just a number. Um, oh, there's lots more you can say about it, but it just gets very complicated. The when you do that, then you can intend things to happen with respect to a material or with respect to the room, and they do happen. 
and w with our tools, we have been able to measure the departure from our normal thermodynamics mm -hmm. of the room. Okay, our, our normal state, we have a well-developed thermodynamics, very precise, um, and we have measurement tools, like a pH meter, measuring alkaline mm -hmm. acid acidity of a solution. We can theoretically calculate what the pH electrode should be like, okay, in that kind of room. And we can see the mathematics that begins to say, hey, it's departing from normal reality. Mm. And we can do the calculation for the next higher gauge symmetry state. The wow. same way, so n now we can track. As we imprint a device to condition a room, we can start in the normal reality and we see the curve go along and then after a period of time we see it start changing in a sigmoidal fashion going towards the in printed intention into the device that's tuning the room. Uh -huh. We can measure it. Measure it in, in, uh, in the range of one to several hundred milli electron volts. Uh, very quantitative, fairly precise. Um, and that's whether or not there are people in the room. Whether or not. We can do it in an empty room. Uh, we can do it in a full room. Um, as long as the intention is towards that room. Yes, what we, what we do, well first of all, we, we imprint into a simple electrical device, okay? Something that you would have, could have bought, not the device, but you'd buy the parts in Radio Shack in 1955, that sort of thing. Okay. Very low tech. Um, and we imprint from a deep meditative state, a group of people. Two is the smallest we've used, my wife and I, up to six. Uh, more often than not, we do it with four. But we can do it with three, we can do it with two. Um, and the first step in the process, first of all, I write out a meditation, uh, not a meditation, but an intention okay. for what experiment we want to do. And so we go into deep meditation state and, and we cleanse the area first. And then we in the intention statement, we activate the indwelling consciousness of the space. The assumption is that the space is already conscious everywhere. And in my modeling, I can say, explain how atoms become conscious, mm. all right? And then the second step is to activate this indwelling consciousness sufficiently to raise the gauge symmetry state of the space to this higher level of reality. Mm. And once it's at that level of reality, we then have a, a statement which tunes the room for a particular experiment, which then, uh, and that's, what the, that's, that's going to be the mission of this device mm. when we put it in the room where we want to run the experiment. <laughs> Just to make sure we all are following this, because it, it, it's just fascinating. Uh, you, the state in which we normally live, normal, yeah. yes. every day, right. it, you had a name for it's it, which called I U1, can't remember. It's called U1 electromagnetic gauge symmetry state. Uh, yes. Okay, so that yes. state is, is at a certain level. Yes. And then we are able, actually, through intention and through meditation and all that, to raise the state to another state, which is SR or S1? S capital S, capital U, bracket, two, bracket, okay. SU2. To, to that, and once the energy of that, we have raised that energy from where we normally are to that, yeah. then there, certain things can happen that can't happen Absolutely. under our normal. Th that's Let me give you an example. Well, actually, I do want an example, and we're going to do that in our next okay. segment because this is okay. exactly where I want to go. How do we apply this in our everyday yeah. life? Yeah. We're having this conversation with Dr. William Tiller. I'm Filippo Voltaggio, and I can't wait for the next segment.